Are you thinking about maybe moving to Italy or coming here for an extended vacation? And maybe you like to cook or bake and you're wondering about what your pantry might look like and what sort of ingredients you'll find? If so, this is the episode for you. My name is Brenda, you're watching Repatriated and this is a daily life episode. Um, earlier today, I was baking cookies and so my kitchen table was really clean and I decided that was a good opportunity to clean out the pantry and you know, I was thinking about all of the unique ingredients that I have here that are maybe a little bit different than what I had in the United States. So if you're from the US or Canada, um, this might seem pretty cool to you. I have heard they have a lot of these things in the UK and on the East Coast and that maybe I'm just not used to it. Also, it is fly season, so bear with me if we've got some flies buzzing around. Um, they're after those cookies, I guess. So a few of the things um, that I have in my pantry and fridge that I think are unique and that I really like um, here in Italy. Um, one, I mean, we have something like this, uh, of course, in the US too, and it's just an aerosol oil that I use when I'm using the air fryer. There are a lot of fried foods here in Sicily, and this is a way of giving just a little bit of extra crunch when I'm using the air fryer without having to use like a big vat of deep frying oil. So that's pretty cool. Um, again, earlier today I was baking. There are a lot of different kinds of flours available in Italy, including a lot that are not wheat flours. Um, one of the ones I used today was the almond flour, the mandalorian flour. This is a little bit expensive. Uh, for 500 grams, um, it was about six euro. So this is quite an expensive kind of flour, but um, I don't currently have a device that will grind almonds for me. So that's a good way to buy that. One of the other flowers I used today, um, this is a farino that is a type 00. This is like what you would use in the US for making pasta or sometimes pizza dough. It's actually not used as often here as some of the other flowers are. I'm just used to it. Um, so I bought some zero zero. One of the other flowers I was using today that I will need to probably get some more of. This one, um, this type of farina is called Manitoba. It's also called type zero. So it's not quite as fine as the double zero. Um, and then there's one other step besides this one that's less fine, but also not a whole grain. Again, a lot of different flowers. Um, they have self-rising flower here. Uh, which I know they have in the UK, but I hadn't seen in the US before. And that's kind of handy. And I'll tell you one of the reasons why is because just as there are a million types of flowers, there's also a million types of leavening. So it's not as simple as just buying a packet of yeast. I'm very accustomed to cooking with dry yeast in the United States, and that is not common here. So I had to buy a lot of different products, to try and figure out how to use things. So, um, labeled as fresh beer yeast in the refrigerated section near the butter. You get these little cubes um, that you keep in the fridge and that is basically a live yeast. Um, I've been learning how to use that. Other things you will find, this is a leavening for sweet cooking for cakes and things. I've accidentally bought that a couple of times because I haven't been entirely sure I was looking for yeast. And what I was getting was basically baking powder. And so this one and this one, this one is flavored with vanilla also, but it is a le it's basically a baking powder um, intended for cooking things that are sweet. Then I also did find a dry yeast, again, still labeled as beer yeast, but this one, is a little bit more like what I'm used to in the United States. I can't remember what the packet is. Yeah, it's just a plain envelope packet, but this one is a dry yeast. But it was not that easy to find. This is not that common. I just bought some because it's what I'm comfortable with, especially for bread making. Um, I'm just not used to the other kinds yet, but I'm learning all those different kinds of yeasts. Plus, you don't need to bake a lot of things because there's also probably about 10 different varieties like this of different kinds of sfoglia, of basically dough that is pre-prepared for you. Uh, it comes in rectangle shapes, it comes in round shapes. There's um, 
dough that's better for sweet things. There's things that are better for savory puff pastries. And I honestly, I do not know the difference yet between all of them. I've just been occasionally buying one and experimenting. This one looks like it's gonna puff up quite a bit. So I'm going to try and make um, some kind of maybe a savory tart with that. But it's basically all ready to go. And on par parchment paper, you just roll it out and, um, and you've got dough. So that's pretty neat. I'll take my glasses off. I think I can see better without them. And then we'll move into sugar. Lots of different kinds of sugar as well. And in Sicily, they're very big on things that are sweet. So um, I guess that's why. Just regular everyday white sugar. Then I've got powdered sugar, which is called zucchero velo um, here. And it always just comes in these little boxes. So if you're making icing or something that of one of those recipes like we have in the United States that uses a whole lot of powdered sugar, you're gonna need a few boxes. These are only 125 grams in each box. And this is the only size I have ever seen of powdered sugar. A fun one that I have not seen in the US is similar to the powdered sugar, but chocolate. So this is a powdered, let's say a powdered chocolate sugar, maybe something like what you would put on top of a fancy cappuccino, um, so it probably exists in the U.S. and I'm just not, I just haven't seen it before or had it available to cook with and very inexpensive. These things are all like around a euro um, per box. So kind of a fun thing to have around even if you just use it for coffee or decorating. Here's another shortcut, kind of an item that I really, really like. Creme de but in an instant form where you just, um, Mix it in with milk and you get a, a creme pat uh, with real vanilla bean in it. All of these things are completely natural ingredients. It's not a list of chemicals here, um, but it is really convenient. And that one is not terribly sweet. So it really, you can work with it. You know, it's, it's a very versatile kind of a product uh, to have on hand just by adding milk and whipping, sort of like an instant vanilla pudding in the US, except so much better. <laughs> so um, that is a fun and handy item for baking as well. And then something that I brought with me from the States, I'm just pointing it out because I really like it, is this anise oil. So this one came from Lorian Oils. And it, unlike an extract with alcohol, this is far, far more potent. So it just takes a few drops. And that's one of the reasons why I brought that um, here, but I have seen similar things in the grocery store here, um, as well as all the other kinds of common um, flavorings that you might have in an extract form. They have them here, and I'm guessing in a more potent form or with less alcohol because they come in very tiny, tiny um, vials here. I, but I haven't tried a lot of them yet. So that's yet to come in baking adventures. Another thing that I use a lot that I used to consider cheating in the United States, but here it's used quite regularly in sauces and things for a thickener, is of course corn flour. That comes again, kind of in the same size box as the sugars, and it is primarily used for thickening and you find it in all kinds of recipes just as a normal, um, normal sort of ingredient that they use regularly here. So I don't know why I ever attached a stigma to it um, in the United States, but there you go. Corn flour, also known as cornstarch um, in the US, is a common ingredient here. Uh, now we'll switch to some of the more savory cooking kinds of things that I like. Um, I know it's just garlic powder, but this garlic powder that they have here is so much more, <laughs> I guess it's more powdery than what I'm used to in the United States. It's very, very fine. And so um, you even have to be careful as you're using it, it'll just take to the air and you'll inhale it. Um, it's such a fine powder, but that also means it's absorbed really easily. And it's perfect for an American food that I think they should start eating here in Italy because it's so good is garlic bread. I love garlic bread. They don't eat that here, um, but I still make it at home. And this is the perfect garlic for that purpose. Uh, some of my other favorite things, bechamel sauce. It comes in a couple different sizes of cartons like this that's ready to go. 
So you don't have to make a roux. You don't have to worry that you've overcooked it or undercooked it or you, know, you didn't use enough butter or whatever. Um, boom, done. Bechamel sauce, just open it and use it. And the sizes that they put these things in are actually perfect. So I love this little one, takes care of pretty much any use I have for bechamel sauce perfectly. And then like I they have a bigger one. So maybe if you have a family of four or something, you get the bigger one. Um, the portion sizes are perfect. And then boom, you've got bechamel ready to go. And it's delicious. And this is about 65 cents. So none of this is expensive stuff at all. Um, if you want a fancier sauce, and again, you don't want to cook too much, they have all these beautiful little sauces in the refrigerated section that are basically like a sauce starter. Um, so just mix it with some of your pasta water and you're good to go. I sometimes doctor it up with, you know, a few other things if I'm feeling like it, but you don't have to. So this one is a cheese sauce and comes in a little plastic container like this, gluten-free. Just put that into your pasta with some pasta water. You're done. I just saw this one recently, the truffle sauce. I'm looking forward to trying that. That might be tonight's dinner. Um, again, most these are all things that are less than a couple of euros. Um, I think the one I usually get, the cacio e pepe, is I think 125. So and it makes basically one, you know, family size meal of pasta. That's the right amount of sauce. Measuring pasta. Something so simple. So first of all, we're gonna look at some pasta. This is some good pasta. Again, you always wanna choose pasta that's lighter in color like this and that has kind of a rough texture to it. Um, that indicates that it's been dried very slowly. That's a higher quality of pasta and it's naturally lower in gluten. So it's gonna be easier on your stomach no matter where it is you're buying pasta. Get pasta that looks this type of color and texture. These um, Rumo pastas, I buy in one kilogram packages. Um, they've been one euro 69. So <laughs> a kilo of really good pasta in the United States like this would probably, I don't know, I don't like to think about it. It would be a whole lot more than a dollar 69, that's for sure. Um, but it's very good. What I like, so on the back of this package, I don't know if you can see, is a way to measure um, your portions. So you want one, roughly 100 grams per person, and this lets you take out a stack of pasta, compare it against the circles, and know how much you're cooking. Easy peasy. Every pasta container should have this. On the back of this pasta, same thing. I'm gonna unstick the resealable sticker to show you that down through the middle is a guide showing you how much is left in the bag and how many grams that corresponds to so you can choose the right amount for how many people you're cooking for. Ta-da! It's that easy. Oh, I almost forgot. I've got something in the freezer to show you as well while I get back. Um, I'll mention that Italian kitchens are very small. Space is very limited in kitchens in Italy. So they are all designed in what, um, as Americans, we would consider a galley style kitchen where everything is in one lane, one narrow line along the wall is, you know, all of your cabinets, your stove, your sink, your fridge, all together, no counter space. Instead, you have this, the big kitchen table that doubles as your dining room table. Um, that is your work surface. And so, yeah, I let mine get cluttered occasionally because I don't dine at it um, hardly ever, but it is my work surface and so I have to keep it clean to an extent. And today, since I was making cookies and I needed a lot of space for the dough, um, I needed the space, so clearing it off and here we are. Another product that has become a staple because I like to do shortcuts sometimes. This is a 15 vegetable minestrone soup frozen pack. It's not soup yet. It's just the vegetables that are all chopped, ready to go. And I add them to everything. I mean, if you add them to water, you basically, you do have soup. Um, otherwise I add it to pasta. 
I add it to anything, really. Anytime I'm starting to feel like I need more vegetables, this is here for me. And so potatoes, carrots, tomato, zucchini, um, barlotti beans. Um, I'm not sure, cavallo verza, what that one is. Uh, peas, mustard greens, some smaller beans, pumpkin, spinach, uh, red onion, parsley, basil. And anyway, it's fantastic just to pour some of that in with my pasta sometimes. Um, it smells terrific. I do not doubt that I'm going to be eating a lot of this um, in the colder months. One more like that. It's a small freezer with a lot of ice. Okay, very noisy. Um, and spinach. We have frozen spinach everywhere. This is portioned into little cubes that again, I think are just perfect, especially for those days when I'm feeling like I didn't get enough leafy greens. Boom, single serving of leafy greens. It's all compacted. Again, I can toss it in with pasta. I can microwave it, whatever. I've got healthier food on the way. I put it with eggs, done. So some pantry ingredients might be the same as what you have. Some might be a little bit different. Um, but you've gotten a little glimpse at some of my favorite things and please feel free to ask questions in the comments and I will do my best to answer them for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.